<laughs> you know that scene in Scrubs? Um, not the, where do you think we are? <sighs> oh, it's dusty, isn't it? No, a different scene. Uh, there's one where they all go to the beach and then the pretty blonde doctor puts a bikini on and she walks out onto the beach and she's like, right, everybody look and, you know, check me out before I go back to normal. Good girl. This is basically what I'm doing with this car today. Quite a tenuous link. Yeah, so basically this is a 1998 Chimera, um, a TVR Chimera. And as you can see, it's quite nice. Um, and that's because I just finished it. Um, this is going tomorrow, it's being picked up tomorrow. And I have a couple more jobs to do on it. One of which is a test drive. And I thought, do you want to come along? Of course, if you're thinking of buying a TVR Chimera, and you should, they're brilliant. You can get all the info you need in my book, which is a buyer's guide, which I did a little while ago, and it's got pictures in it and stuff. Look, it tells you all about, all about the cars. So, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna give you a guide on this because, well, then you won't have any reason to buy the book. Yep, as you can see, all been done. Why is the chassis white, you may ask? Well, this was, Peter Wheeler's uh, you know, colour of choice. He thought it looked better this way because it makes the chassis look big and imposing. And to be fair, it does. And it also shows up rust, if you have any rust coming through. Um, but it also gets very dirty very quickly. And that is where my scrubs analogy is connected to this because like Miss Pretty Doctor in her bikini, once you've seen it, it will not be the same again it will go back to normal. And once I take this car out on a test drive, it will not look this good again. It will look horrendous, although it is, it's got a bit of wax on it in places, admittedly, but yeah. So this is it. You've got uh, double wishbone front suspension, double wishbone rear suspension. The exhaust is tucked up the side um, and up inside the chassis there. That's the only part it hangs lower than the chassis. It's sort of there. Fuel tank's inside the boot. This one's got a BTR cone diff. Let's spin the light round. There we go. A BTR cone diff. Um, limited slip diff, I should say. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much, this is, a, this is a sort of quite a standard spec Chimera, to be honest. This is about as regular as you could get, but uh, it's had everything done. Bushes, the chassis has been coated, uh, well it's been repair, um, refurbished, as you can see, there's a join there. So that bit there, and everything along there, have made. So this is original, and that is new. All that. Probably on the other side as well, yep. So yeah. That's all new, those are the outriggers, those are what rusts. Um, yeah, new bushes all round, new brakes all round, new pipe work. There's the brake pipes up here. This is the front brake pipes. Uh, a lot of it's original, obviously. The engine is original, it's, you know, a bit, <laughs> a bit second hand looking in places, but what do you want? You know, it's gonna be covered in oil soon. Because uh, if there's no oil on a Rover V8, there's no oil in it. But yeah, new steering rack gaiters. Uh, oh, a cable tie that I haven't trimmed. Muppet. But it's got the original Bilstein dampers on it. And this car is quite original, so it's quite a nice car to take out. And show you what a Chimera is like. Uh, obviously, I have a Chimera myself, so I could just show you mine, but um, yeah, it's kind of a little bit buried, uh, but yeah, so this is a customer's car, and it's quite a nice one. So yeah, it's uh, an S-Reg Chimera, that's 98 and 99, uh, registered on 1st of January 99, I think, which of course makes this a 98 car, because 
there's no way they'd have been at work on January the 1st to build it. And even if they were, they wouldn't have done it in one day. Um, finished in a lovely fetching shade of Rolex blue, which as we can see is not blue. No, really, that's, that's as purple as purple gets. In fact, that color is basically uh, amethyst by BMW. And um, well, last time I checked, amethysts weren't blue. Oh, look, not blue. Anyway, to be honest, this is the best car TV I made. And I don't mean the best car as in, you know, how it drives or how fast it is or whatever, just as an overall package. The Chimera was perfect. And that's why they sold more of these than Griffiths and S's combined. Uh, an S spitting down there. Um, and the Griffith that was based on, um, or wasn't based on a Chimera, the Griffith, which was mechanically very similar to the Chimera. They both had pretty much the same chassis. Um, some subtle differences and obviously different styling. But yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. But the Chimera was really, really clever. Really clever, very, very forward thinking. Um, and people don't give it the credit it deserves for it. This was a, a masterclass in packaging and in design on a budget, basically. It's amazing to think that these cars came out of units that were like as shonky as this one up in Blackpool. Do you require examples of why the Chimera is genius? Okay, I'll show you one. Here is a door. And people always look at the TVRs, the styling on them, because they've got this cool little recess here. It's kind of like a bit like Dodge Vipers have. Well, I'm not quite sure which one had it first. Oh, it's a cracking piece of style in that, apparently. Is it? Well, yes, it is, but is that its primary function? Oh, I don't think so, because Look at that door. What do you notice about it? Other than the fact it doesn't have a door handle. To give you a clue, I will show you the door on this S3C and you'll soon see the difference. This S3C uh, has a rare door um, arrangement on it because this one hasn't fallen off. That's normally what they do on these. But if you look down here, you've got a panel gap. And if you look along the bottom, You've got a panel gap, just about to see it, and a panel gap at the back. Here is flush. Here is flush. Here is flush, all good. Here, not flush. Sitting inboard of the body quite significantly. Okay, fine. So the door needs to come out slightly at the back. What's so abnormal about that? Yeah, so at the bottom, it's out. But at the top, it's in. And at the front, it's flush. So if you pulled the top out and pushed the bottom in on the hinges at the front, the top of the door at the front would be stuck out. And the bottom of the door at the front would be stuck in and it would rub. But it's, it's proud here. Flush there, and that's not this car. The other doors are the same, and this is S's in general. I like this. So I can go and have a look at that one or that one, the bodies of those. They will be the same. The doors are a different shape to the car. You know, it's just how it is. Um, they did fettle it and tweak it, and some of them are better than others. But there's a lot of labour involved in that. With the Chimera, you have one panel line here, one shut line to deal with. The bottom one is pretty much down at sill level beyond the curve of the body, so you don't see it. That is horrendous, that panel gap. But my finger almost disappears up inside it. It's huge. Look at it. Does it matter? No. Because you can't see it. It's like we agree with our limited production capabilities. You know, we're not a, they're not a big factory with expensive R&D and computer aided design and everything like that. They're just, you know, and they haven't got the time to put into the cars to keep the cars profitable and make them 
you know, give them stupendous build quality. So what's the best thing to do? Make it easy, keep it simple. Panel gap at the back is fine. Some of them are worse than others, but that one's pretty good because I've aligned it, obviously. The door to open There you go, and the door, the bottom of the door covers right down to here. Covers the sill up. Other TVRs did away with that. I mean, the Griffith, you can see a little bit more of the bottom of the door edge there, and on other TVRs as time went on, you could see a bit more of the bottom, but the Chimera was really the first one where it just made it easy for them to build it. How many panels is that car made of? One, well, they've got the body tub, the bonnet, two, boot lid, two doors, roof hoop, six, roof panel, seven, headlamp cowls, eight, nine, brake fluid cover, or clutch uh, cylinder cover, I should say, 10, dash top, dash bottom, dashboard, centre console, probably 14 pieces of fiberglass, the whole car. Compare this to a Tasman of not many years before. A bonnet, a bumper, a splitter, two headlamp pods, side skirts, door, door, roof, roof, same as the Chimera. Inside there are extra panels that the Chimera doesn't have. Bootlid, rear valance, rear bumper. Heater box. It's just so much more labor intensive and later wedges or fuel flap there's another one later wedges had, had their own mirrors as well so the chimera was a sensible car honestly that's a sensible car how funky is that will you ever get bored of that Oh, but TVRs are too gimmicky. Why do they have to do all that? Well, no, it's not gimmicky at all because there's your striker, which on most cars, maybe not cars so much now, but most cars of the era would have had, it would have had the striker on the post and the door lock mechanism would have been in the door. In fact, most, I think most cars are still like that. This car is, is different. The lock mechanism is in the pillar. Which means if you want to break into this car, sticking a coat hanger down the side of the door will do nothing because there's no mechanism in there. It's deep inside there. And you can't stick a coat hanger in there because it's all encapsulated inside the body. It means you don't have to have a door handle on the outside as well because it's contained with the button. Obviously the earlier Chimera did have a push button here. There's no rods inside there. There's no linkages. The only mechanism in there is for the windows. Uh, you know, there's no, I mean, the, the handles on these, on the S's, they're a nightmare. They're, the cables always come apart. But yeah, it's a, it's a clever machine. Two knobs. Gear knob, open door. Hmm, there's no one there to pull it. There's cables coming from that off to the lock mechanism. So to get in the car, you push the button like this, and that's just making the pillar, the lock, move. But to get out, you twist that. And if you want to lock the car, you just disable the lock. You've got enough room in here for a man who's six foot seven, because the man who owned TVR at the time was six foot seven. The pedals are adjustable, you can wind them in and out. The seat is adjustable, the steering is adjustable. It's comfy. There's space behind there to put soft, lightweight things. There's room for a passenger. If you've got friends, have to let me know what that's like. You've got a big boot. In fact, the boot has the roof in it. It actually has the roof in it, which I shall need, because if I go out without a roof on, it will rain, because England. So when you've got the bonnet open, you can see the white chassis, it's there. Earlier Chimeras did have silver chassis, and in fact the silver chassis tend to last a little bit longer. The, the coating was better. Um, and then the very, very last ones had grey, but you don't see, see many of those. But there is a basically a 3.9 litre Rover V8. It's called a 400, but it's basically 3.9.
what's clever under here, you might ask. Well, pretty much everything you can see that isn't a swell pot or an exhaust or an expansion tank is standard. It's just, you know, they're standard parts. That's the Ford part. This is obviously a Rover engine. This bottle goes in God knows how many different cars. I've seen them in BMWs, I've seen them in Rover 45s. They're in all sorts. Engine straight out of a Land Rover Discovery, really. Radiator is the same as a, well, it's not quite the same. It's a bit like a Range Rover one, but it is slightly different di uh, dimensions. Ford, inside there is a standard Gerlin type uh, clutch slave cylinder. The master cylinder and servo are Ford based. It's just straightforward. And this is in quite nice condition, this engine. It's uh, only done about 50 odd thousand miles, this car, which sounds low, but a lot of them have only done that because they're sort of high days and holidays cars. Um, I've obviously put this back together. This has been completely in pieces. Body has been off. You've seen it in the background in the workshop on a trolley of the body. And then the chassis has been sort of in bits like that one or those ones over there or that one hiding there. So yeah, th this one's finally um, finished its session. People say, oh, the exhaust, TVR are just crazy. The doors are just crazy. No, the doors are sensible. There's a reason they do that. Trying to put a scallop in here and fitting a manufacturer's mechanical door handle was a pain. That button's about a tenner. Solenoid in there, about a tenner. Wing mirror, door mirror, sorry, off a of Citroen. This, you know. <laughs> That, that, is probably, that door was probably cheaper to make than the one on the S. Oh, I've got a leak. People say, oh, the exhaust's crazy. Well, is it? I don't think it is. If the exhaust came out of the engine and swept backwards like it would normally do, you wouldn't be able to have the engine as far back in the chassis as this. It would have to sit further forward, which means the bonnet line would be higher. The styling wouldn't be as good. The handling wouldn't be as good because the weight, you know, balance and everything like that would be, um, would be worse. And you can have space by putting the exhaust there. It wins you enough space to push the engine right back. I mean, Christ's sake, Citroen did it in the SM. I mentioned, I've, owned, yeah, that's mine. I, um, I, yeah, I own an SM as well. Putting the engine back as far as you can. I mean, it is technically mid-engine because the wheel is here. And the engine's there. It's behind the axle line. I am the axle line and I'm in line with the swell pot and the exhaust. So it's a front mid-engine layout, but with rear-wheel drive. It is very rear-wheel drive. It's kind of nice to see this car going, and I don't mean that in a nasty way. Uh, it's been here a long time. This is one of the first cars that came in before the COVID thing, um, and it's been here ages. It really has. And if it wasn't a delay in trying to get the thing back together, and because there was only one of us working here, well, there is only one of us working here now, but there was always, at the time, COVID time, there was only one of us working here, and then, trying to find, you know, get the companies who do the various bits and bobs, making sure they're open. It's just gone on and on and on and on and on, even to the point you couldn't get the suspension bushes for it because there was a shortage of the uh, materials because they were trying to make them for PPE. Um, it's just been, I mean, this car has been through history here, but it is finally done. It's finally there. And the owner has been absolutely sounds a pound, spot on all the way through it. Um, and that is really, uh, that's a lesson to be learned. If you've got a car in somewhere, and you're calm and chilled and, you know, just sort of like, yeah, I know what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, you're doing what you can, then you will get the best, best job because I've known with that car, I don't have to rush it. If I see something and think, oh, I could make that better than that is, I can do it. I don't have to be conscious of the time. I can just say, I'll, I'll make that as good as it can be for him. And now I think this car is now pretty sound. Um, but, you know, it's just nice to have uh, that freedom and I, fortunately I get a, a lot of customers who are quite laid back and quite chilled out and they know what's involved in doing this kind of job but this was extreme I mean Christ, that must have been here two years and it came here in bits he took it apart himself in his garage at home so it's not even been driven in it, I don't think he's had it on I don't think this thing's been on the road for about four years so uh, I should probably go and drive it and find out what it's like